One of the first things they teach you when you start studying archaeology at the university is context. Context is paramount. They highlight that, they underline it, they insist until you really understand this concept. But what is this concept? Why is it so important? Let's discover it now. Okay guys, we're gonna go through eight main points to try to better understand this concept. Why is context so important in archaeology? It's the foundation of research, we could say. And a lot of people external to archaeology who have not pursued an academic degree sometimes don't understand this. They are, they are not aware of it or simply, as I said, they do not understand it. So that is why it is important to do this video also for all the people who are simply interested in archaeology but did not have not been trained correctly, we could say. Okay, so first point, clearly. What is an archaeological context in practical and physical terms? Well, a context clearly is a place. And when we're talking about archaeological context, usually is a situation, a place where you are finding some artifacts, some buildings, some stratigraphic units, something that is a result of an action, usually human, but not only. It can also be a natural event or something determined by animals and things like that. We also already analyzed this considering the Harris matrix and stratigraphy. Here is a link. You're also going to find the link in the video description. But it's important to say that it's not just a horizontal type of context, okay? A context is also vertical. The stratigraphy itself is something very important. So, uh, once again, the stratigraphy means the different phases, the different layers that build up a specific context. So, not only synchronic at the same chrono chronology, but also diachronic, so observing when you have done uh, a certain amount of archaeological investigation, archaeological work, you can understand the history of that precise site, which is also a part of the concept of context, because it's not simply the place where I find a ceramic vase, but what is taking place in that precise area, okay? We'll get more in depth in the following points, clearly. Let's proceed. Point number two, wider contexts. In fact, following what we have just discussed, uh, an important perception, an important analysis of a context is not only the little place that we are excavating, but the broader context, okay? The landscape, that is a fundamental aspect. Because in the past, a lot of times, we were mainly focusing on the sites, what was happening in that site. But clearly, at a certain point, you have to ask yourself, what is happening with other sites, with the surrounding environment? That's why we talk about ecology, the relationship between the human beings and the environment where they are positioned, located, where, with which they interact. So that's another type of concept, but it's strictly connected to the most obvious and well-known archaeological context. But once again, it's something that we cannot detach at a certain point. It must be part of the analysis and reconstruction of the history of the past of that site and the area. Let's proceed. Point number three, primary and secondary context. This is something that you usually find in an archaeological manual, but it's important to mention this. What do we mean by primary and secondary context? Well, very simple. Primary contexts are those artifacts, are those features, meaning also our um, architectural features, that are found, are discovered where they were conceived, where they were left, by whom used them slash created them, okay? They have not been moved for one reason or another. Secondary context instead you understand at a certain point that that specific object or feature is not 
positioned, is, was not retrieved where it was meant to be in the first place, okay? Something that has been moved from its original place, that's a secondary context, versus primary context where it was originally pus positioned, placed, conceived, okay? <laughs> Let's proceed. Point number four, past and modern investigations. We said something before already, but I just want to underline how uh, in the beginning of the discipline, meaning 19th, 20th century, beginning of the 20th century, clearly, uh, archaeologists were mainly focusing on retrieving objects, finding amazing structures, okay? Hence, the context was a little neglected. Not everyone, okay? There are people, there are uh, some archaeologists that paid attention to the context, but it's something rare and mainly an artificial context like a tomb. Instead, when we're talking about en plein air and when we're talking about open, um, open air structures or open air context, that was rarely taking place. People were not thinking about that, were not collecting the different data, analyzing visually also what was happening, expanding the trench, not just going for that precise item. So clearly we have a partial reconstruction of those sites belonging to those investigations of the past. It's important to remember that, to know that. Let's proceed. Point number five. Something may be banal, but I think it's important to underline the relationship between objects and context and context and objects, okay? Once again, we said we mentioned something above and the points above, but it's important to say that an artifact is telling his story if it's in contact, if it's in relation with its context, okay? And vice versa because also the context can tell you more if the objects, if present, if, um, if it has a sense to have defined objects in that specific context, it's clearly completing the information. Not all contexts do have that, clearly. For example, we are excavating in Azerbaijan a nomadic context where there is very, very few features, but that's a different story. Just to say that there is a strict relationship that one is absolutely tied to the other and they both need each other to furnish the complete scenario or at least much more information than just the single one taken by itself, okay? Let's proceed. Point number six, which stems from the prior point. We could say same object, different context, same context, different object. What do I mean? That. Uh, in fact, if you take a specific object, which can be also a structure, and you put it in different contexts, it achieves, it delivers a completely different meaning. Also, in turn, the same we could say for a context. If there is a specific type of context, but inside or within it, you find objects completely different from a, another similar context, the results are going to be completely different once again. This is more an example of what we were seeing at point five, but I want to underline once again, because now you are starting to understand how important is context and the relationship with its contents. Let's proceed. Point number seven. I wanted to dedicate a point to looters and looting. Yes, because uh, we have been excavating a lot of times with ex-looters, with redeemed looters. And while they're excavating with us, helping out, clearly some stories come out. And a lot of times these people, especially when we're excavating in, uh, in Lazio and uh, Etruscan, uh, Etruria and the Etruscan sites, what clearly emerges is that a lot of these people do not have any idea of context. They don't even take it into consideration. A looter just grabs the object, takes it away, and sells it. So at that point, we completely detach the object from its context. And they have no idea, that's what we try to explain them every time, that that object all of a sudden lost 80% of its importance without its context. Because you don't know where it comes from, you don't know 
the relationship with other objects. You don't know uh, the stratigraphy, where that object was found. I mean, there's so many connections with the context that enriches the information of the artifact. And it's so sad, it's so depressing, we could say, that looters don't actually don't understand that. Because even if they took some notes, it could be more helpful than just grabbing everything and throwing it and selling it abroad, unfortunately. So that's a, an important point that we all, every time, try to explain them. And I can see that they, they a lot of them, a lot of uh, these cases start to, to click something in their minds and they start to understand the damage they, are, they did or they are doing. Because unfortunately, this is a well-present, uh, terrible and criminal attitude and, ha and habit that we still have in Southern Italy and a lot of places in the world, unfortunately. Let's proceed. Point number eight, museums. Now, museums are a fantastic place where you can learn a lot at every stages of your life. When you're a child, when you're a young adult, and when you're an elder age, everyone picks up something different. It's a place where you can really get in contact with the artifacts, okay? Sometimes you have the recreation of certain contexts, but in most cases, I would say 95% of cases, even more, there is no context. That is the downside, that is the weak point of museums. In fact, the museums, according to several scholars, is rather a, an ancient, old concept that is not delivering completely the information, as we said in the points above. It is a antiquary type of concept that was clearly in vogue uh, in the past centuries, which now starts to crumble a little bit. It doesn't make that sense to create new museums. Clearly, you need a place to host the artifacts and somehow put them in contact with the community. A good idea would be starting to conceive to leave the objects in place once studied, once we have understood what has been taking place in that specific context, what are the artifacts telling us. In some cases, it would be fantastic. It would be very intelligent and much more useful to put those objects, those pieces of structures, whatever it is, back where they were found. Even if it's a reconstruction, clearly, once they, you move them and analyze them and draw them and photograph them and whatever you're doing, it's not going to be the same as when you discovered them. But they're going back in their context. So a person who is coming to visit understands much more than just the sequence of little vases on a wooden or a, a glass shelf in, in a museum saying not practically nothing than just immediately see, seeing, for example, a funerary context with all the grave goods positioned inside. It's, it's just something completely different. So clearly we can't abandon museums, but we must start thinking of something alternative or complementary. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and remember that understanding our past explains the present and defines our future. Thank you. Hi guys, if you want to discover more about archaeology and our ancient past from a different perspective, make sure to click on the Camnus logo here below. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you will never miss an episode and join the archaeological community in search of the truth.